1633, he said, In this world, you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, he says, for I will overcome the world. So in the midst of having trials and tribulations and sufferings and afflictions in our lifetime today, the meantime we see, as I mentioned in this verse that Christ mentions in John 16, 33, what does Paul say? Paul wrote, he says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. 2 Timothy 2.13 He also said that godliness with contentment is great gain. 1 Timothy 6.6 6. Romans 12.1 and 2 I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Hebrews 12, 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. So what does all this mean as his beloved according to these verses that I mentioned again? It means that if we truly are his, we will understand that we have a divine redeemer according to chapter 1. Verse 1, Peter says. What else? We understand also that we've been granted the way of truth. Chapter 1, verse 2. And then we also recognize the fact that we have a promise of assurance in Christ. Chapter 1, verse 9. Why? Because our lives will display to the ungodly world godliness. We will suffer persecution. And knowing and understanding Christ is with us in all things, it is great gain. Having Christ. Not the things of this world. First John declares that this world will pass away. Matthew says the same thing. So, and therefore we will be content in our minds, in our bodies, in our heart, our soul. We will present our bodies as living sacrifice to the Lord for His glory. We will test our things by the Word of God. We will live in the world, but we will be separate from the world. And we will ever long for Christ to come. And on that day, we will say, as Luke wrote in his Gospel, Look up and lift up your heads. For your redemption draweth nigh. Luke 21, 28. So what of the ungodly? What of the ungodly? God not only knows how to deliver the godly, but he also, in his sovereignty, knows how to reserve the unjust to an appointed day of divine judgment. Praise God. This because of false teachers then and today that they denied judgment. We see that from the very beginning in the garden. The relative and postmodern worldview at work in these also. Let's go to that real quick. I want you to see that in Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, verse 4 and 5. <coughs> we see where the serpent speaks to Eve, the woman, it says in verse 4. And the serpent said to the woman, You shall not surely die. See? For God does know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So what is he denying? He's denying judgment. And then he's given her the thought of creating her own thoughts, her own ideas, her own views. He says, you shall be as God's only good and evil. 
Well, you may be like that. Uh, do what you want. So what else is the result of God's judgment upon the wicked? We have the relative and postmodern world, you know, as we see in Genesis. But the result of it also is because of God's glory and God's name and His goodness is blasphemed every day. The idolatry in the world, the love of money, lust, covetousness, fornication, adultery, homosexuality, sex trafficking, <coughs> gangs, drug dealing, prostitution, pornography, stealing, cheating, lying, religious cults, murder, war. Abortion, child abuse, a corrupt school system, corrupt government, incest, polygamy, racism, rejection of parental authority, rejection of uh, church authority, if you would. Biblical authority, when I say that, I mean. Deceitfulness. Adding or taking from the word of God or any of the three persons of the Godhead. All these things are the result and will give an account to God and incurs the judgment of God for the wages of sin, which is death, wrath, justice, and eternal fire, eternal punishment. Just as we've seen in the list that Paul uh, wrote in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. <clears throat> Look, I want you to understand something. That just because we see these things today, and just as Lot had saw then, he saw them in the morning. He saw those things and says his soul was vexed. He was tormented in himself every day when he saw these things. That's the question you got to ask yourself too. Do you feel the same when people are blaspheming God? Are you willing to stand up for the truth when it really matters? Or are you willing to close your eyes and turn your head? Why not, right? Doesn't matter, no one sees. Ah, but you're wrong. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, behold the evil and the good, Proverbs 15, 3. 